It's hard to believe, but it's already been over a month since I took delivery of our Tesla Model Y. Since it's been a little over a month, the numbers are in and I have specifics on cost of ownership for this Tesla Model Y, but this should apply to basically every electric vehicle out there. So our family has a 2023 Tesla Model Y, all-wheel drive standard range, and also a 2023 Volkswagen Jetta with a 1.5 liter gas engine. So that comparison will be interesting, a premium electric crossover vehicle compared with an economy gas car. What is the cost of ownership difference on those? Are we still saving money on an electric vehicle? So the adoption rate of electric vehicles is increasing and with that comes a more media coverage, a lot of clickbait headlines on cost of ownership and that charging one costs more than gassing up a vehicle now. And once you click on those articles and dig in, there's very little information or data to make any conclusions about. So we're gonna get actual numbers and see what's fact and what's fiction. So I've been using the Tesla app on my phone to keep track of electrical use and charging costs. So we'll see here, this is a screen capture from the last 31 days, used a total of 536 kilowatt hours. And if we scroll down further on the app, We'll get a breakdown of home charging costs, supercharge costs, and other. So I decided, as I chronicled in, in one of my first videos about the Tesla, to go with the mobile charger from Tesla. So instead of home, it shows under other category, but it's really home charging using the mobile charger. Um, so within the app, you put in what your electrical cost is and then the charger keeps track of how much electricity it delivers to the vehicle and then does a simple calculation. So $71 um, home charging and then $9 through supercharging, that automatically populates based on the, the charge rate of that particular supercharger. You just put in your credit card within this app when you pull up to the supercharger, it recognizes your vehicle, you plug in, and then it automatically provides that data in the apps. The $9 for supercharging was part of the road trip I chronicled. It was roughly 270 mile road trip and we had to stop once to charge along the interstate and that resulted in that $9 charge. I have received our first electric bill since charging the car and I wanted to validate those numbers in the app with the electrical bill before putting this video out. And I can say those numbers are extremely accurate. They matched exactly um, with the utility bill. So now we can go on. I think what's the most interesting is comparing our Tesla to an equivalent gas vehicle and see, are there any monthly savings or am I actually paying more for electricity? So the first comparison we have and a summary of the cost of ownership, I think is the most appropriate, is comparing our Tesla Model Y to an equivalent gas-powered crossover SUV. The costs of our, the actual costs of our Tesla Model Y are summarized under the green header. First, we've got at-home charging at a rate of 13.6 cents per kilowatt hour. And this is a flat rate for our utility provider, Wisconsin Public Service. In, in Wisconsin, we do not have a choice of utility provider. It's simply based on the territory that that, that that utility services. And so you sign up with them. And most everyone is put on a flat rate charge is what this is. You can opt into a tiered program with off-peak rates and things like that, but for most people uh, that would result in higher charges because the penalty of using electricity during on-peak time is so punitive that it, it just doesn't make sense. So uh, that, that's $71, uh, pretty reasonable rate. Um, our supercharger stop is about three times higher in cost, 36 cents per kilowatt hour. They're trying to make money on their supercharging network and it's uh, quite convenient. So uh, they charge more and that was $9. So that was a, about a 10, 15 minute charge there. 
uh, resulting in the $9 charge. Then we've got insurance and I included insurance in here as a line item because that was one thing uh, I get questioned about quite a bit is, is how's the insurance on the Tesla because people hear that it's uh, significantly more. In my experience, uh, I've got Connect by American Family Insurance uh, through Costco and it did go up versus the Chrysler Pacifica, but that was a 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. Um, so this is a 2023 brand new car, higher value. So it went up a little bit, uh, but anyway, it's $28 a month. I've got thousand dollar deductible on comp and collision. Um, so pretty small figure uh, in my opinion. And then we've got Wisconsin registration, uh, which I included in here because Wisconsin does charge a hundred dollars extra per year for an electric vehicle to recoup some of the gas tax that you're not paying uh, to help maintain the road. So uh, the road budget in Wisconsin is funded by gas tax. Since you're not buying tax, they charge you $100 more on registration. So our registration is fairly low. Uh, the normal is $87. So if you've got an electric vehicle, it's $187 per year. Uh, so that results uh, in a cost of of uh, ownership one month of our Tesla for $124. Under the red header, we've got the equivalent gas vehicle. And uh, these are hypothetical numbers, but I tried to be pretty fair. So the first thing we have is gasoline, uh, regular 87 octane at the average right now is $3 and 39 cents a gallon in this area. And that's one thing that's highly variable. Um, so I just picked the cost as of today, basically at 25 miles per gallon going 1830 miles for the month that results in a cost of $248 insurance. Uh, again, this is a equivalent cost vehicle. So I gave it a slight reduction, um, on the gas vehicle, so $26 a month for insurance. And then Wisconsin registration, instead of $16 a month, it's $7 a month, so a slight reduction there. And then for oil changes, that, that's the one routine maintenance thing um, I decided to allocate to the gas vehicle because it's relatively easy. $50 oil change, assuming every 6,000 miles, gives us $15 for that month. So we're just shy of $300 for the month. And if we go to the, the monthly difference there, it's $172 difference. So this is a, a bit surprising to me. It's, it's more savings than I would have assumed. So, but these are actual uh, real world numbers with some estimation in there for the gas vehicle. And just on the right, we've got a fancy pie chart there to say the gas vehicle's monthly expenses. We can see 84% of that monthly expense is gasoline at the $3.39 a gallon. So the next thing, um, because that was a bit of a hypothetical for a 25 mile per gallon vehicle, I thought, okay, let's give a gas vehicle the max benefit and actual real world numbers and compare it to our 2023 Volkswagen Jetta, which I averaged 40 miles per gallon with. So this is the, the other extreme of saying an economy car, an economy gas car, can it compete with an electric vehicle uh, in cost of ownership and that monthly expense? So again, our Teslas in the green area were the same 124 dollars per month and then our Volkswagen uh, the gas cost drops down significantly from $250 a month down to $155 per month and this is the actual insurance cost $22 so you can see um, economy car of the same age is only six dollars less a month in insurance uh, than an electric vehicle so uh, that's probably a bit overblown in the headlines and, and uh, reporting is the cost of insurance. And then Wisconsin registration again, $7 oil change that same $15. So our total expenses for the Jetta a month are just under $200 for that 1830 miles a month. 
So we are still saving $75 a month with a much more comfortable and larger electric vehicle versus an economy car. So that's a bit surprising to me too. I thought they'd be a basically equivalent of 40 mile per gallon gas car and the electric, um, but that's not the case. So that is interesting real world numbers for Wisconsin in the United States, an electric vehicle is cheaper to operate on a monthly basis than an equivalent or even an economy car. But that's variable depending on where you live. If around the world and even within the United States, utility rates, electrical rates uh, vary. But that's not all. So I've got a couple different scenarios we can look at. I mentioned we're on flat rate electrical pricing. Wisconsin Public Service does have a pilot program for electrical vehicles. If you charge between midnight and 8 a.m., you can get a special charger from them and they will charge you the off-peak rate of six and a half cents per kilowatt hour. So let's see what that would cost. So our Tesla, again, is under the green header. We've changed our kilowatt hour rate to 6.2 cents, which it is under this electric vehicle charging time of use. But you can see directly below, there's an additional charge for this program. So it's $8 a month to be in the program for administrative fees. Understand it costs them more money to manage this. And then $12 a month to pay for their charger. So you have to use their charger, which connects to Wi-Fi and then reports at which time you're using the electricity to make sure it's in, indeed off peak. You can charge the Tesla. You can program the Tesla. You can program the car or the charger to make sure you're only charging during this time uh, to make sure you're getting that reduced rate. And that's the idea behind this. But the charger itself costs, costs an additional $12 per month you can buy it outright at $621, and then monthly this uh, program charger dropped down to $8 a month. But if you do the math on that, it takes like five years to pay for the charger at the monthly fee. So the chances of something going wrong or maybe them updating chargers or the program going away during that time is just like, I'm, it makes sense just to pay the monthly fee in, in my opinion versus buy it outright. We'd still have our supercharger trip, so that'd be one thing if we went on a road trip once during the month, which we did in this particular month, we'd still have that supercharger fee. And of course, insurance and Wisconsin registration remains the same, but that drops our overall monthly cost for our Tesla down to $104. Uh, so even with that $20 fee, because we're getting an electrical rate at about half, uh, that's enough of a difference uh, to make our overall cost go down. So based on the equivalent gas vehicle, that bumps our savings up to $192 per month. So I am going to opt into this program and try it out and see what it's like to live with off-peak charging. It's a little bit of a convenience. Um, I wanted, before doing that, I wanted to get a cost over at least the first month of ownership and see how much our electrical use was. We drove a bit more than I was expecting, uh, but it's a new vehicle, so you, anytime you go somewhere, we're, we seem to be taking it instead of the Jetta. And uh, just going for rides more often than, than before just to, you know, Sunday cruise. So uh, our usage is up a bit, but the other thing I wanted to make sure is just in daily life, if you need to come home and charge during the day, obviously that won't work. You will be charged a high rate. And then it doesn't make sense to opt in and pay those program charges for $20 a month if you're gonna charge it during the day. Um, so I wanted to make sure that just basically with our daily use case, that we could be into a situation where we only charge between midnight and 8 a.m. And based on the first month and a half, it, that's not going to be an issue. There's plenty of range in the vehicle uh, for our daily uses that we don't need to charge during the day. So I'm going to opt into that.
But wait, there's more! There is one more scenario I wanted to look at to be fair and be more representative of different situations that people have, recognizing that I live in a house with an attached garage that I was able to put a charger in and charge off my electrical utility and get the reduced rate. There are other people, if you have an apartment or have street parking, that may not be an option. You're, you're going to have to use public chargers. So here's the scenario I wanted to, to do to reflect that and see, is it really cheaper to have an electric vehicle if you can't charge at home? So we've got the same 1,830 miles. Again, our Tesla is under the green header and I zeroed out the at-home charging and then basically allotted all those kilowatt hours to Tesla supercharging at the 36 cents per kilowatt hour. That ups the cost of electricity significantly to $191. Insurance and registration remain the same, so we've got a total of $235. Based on the equivalent gas vehicle, you're still going to save $61 a month, but you're gonna to have to deal with that public charging and recognize this is highly variable depending on region. So if you go on to the Tesla website and I think go look for their supercharging network, it'll bring up a map and it'll have little pins um, by the local superchargers, you can click on those and see what their charge cost is or their rate. And then use a similar scenario to see, um, you know, where you'd be at. I think worst case, you're probably equivalent to gas or probably still savings. I'm, I'm thinking Southern California, things like that. Electrical rates are likely a bit higher than what I see in my area. But then again, gas is also not $3.39 a gallon. It's probably more like $4.50 a gallon. So it, it probably balances each other out in that scenario. And I, I would assume you're still basically at parity or maybe saving a bit with the electric vehicle. Mostly because uh, the electric vehicle is, is more efficient uh, when we're talking about energy units. Now, if we went back to our case of comparing the Model Y against the Jetta that gets 40 miles per gallon and you have to use public charging networks and pay those higher rates, it's likely going to cost less to have that economy gas vehicle than the electric vehicle. There you have it, some actual real world numbers. In my particular case, I'm saving a not insignificant amount of money per month, 100 and 50 to 200 dollars a month depending on use and i'm going to opt in to the utility program to get the reduced rate and i'll give you an update on how that's working and how their charger works if you would like to follow along and see how the time of use charging rate works with my local utility the best way to do that is subscribe to my channel and enable notifications and you'll know when i post a new video thanks for watching adios